preparing to live stream the meeting. All right, we're getting close. This is looking good. Okay. The meeting. All right. Got that. There, there's Patricia. What? She popped up. Oh, that's crazy. All right, welcome everybody. Um, I understand Patricia uh, has popped up. I don't see her on my screen yet. <laughs> is she driving? Is she in her office? What's she doing? She's just smiling. Yeah, she's <laughs> smiling. She's it's just talk a picture now. of her. Okay, I must have the wrong <laughs> thing. Up. Hang on. Say, say something, Patricia. <laughs> there we go. I'm here. <laughs> Hello. I'm there here, you. but I'm driving. I'm driving. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, until you get here, I'm going to do this. It's more comfortable. All right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We are going to uh, this evening, evening to continue our conversation about heaven slash afterlife and that kind of thing. And um, let me show you something. I've got a, I've got a little uh, a short PowerPoint presentation with slides on it that um, I took myself. Uh, there are pictures of headstones at the Owl Rock United Methodist Church Cemetery, which is in back of our church. And um, some of those, I, since I photographed everything in that cemetery, I, I knew that there were some inscriptions. There were lots of inscriptions, but some of them referred, made some sort of reference to the afterlife. And I thought maybe if we look at them, especially the older ones, we could kind of get a feeling for does this tell us anything about what people believed about the afterlife back then? Some of the um, inscriptions that you might see say something like, um, you will always be loved and never forgotten, or, you know, um, mother, or maybe it has your, your rank and your branch of service and which war you fought in. But uh, some of them are scripture verses or references that seem to refer to the afterlife. And I thought we'd just play them. You ready? Yeah. Okay, let's see what we can do. I'm going to do a screen share. And we are going to look at this. Let me move this out of the way at the top. And, and let's do this thing. All right, Owl Rock Cemetery inscriptions. That's a picture I took of Owl Rock over there on the right, the Owl Rock Cemetery, which is the prettiest cemetery in Atlanta, if I do say so myself. It is gorgeous, historic, well-kept. Um, uh, people going back all the way who were born in the 18th century and came here from Ireland are buried here. So some of the first um, European settlers um, came from Ireland. And I think the Campbells were among those families. Uh, and Jim Campbell is a, a longtime, lifelong member of that church, raised there and still there every Sunday. All right, so let's go for it. Now, this is findagrave.com, and this is Al Rock's main page. And if you want to see every single person buried there, you just press search the cemetery, and you can see Every a picture of, of every single headstone, along with you can click it and see a personal page of anybody who's buried there, along with any photographs that I or other persons have uploaded. Findagrave.com. I am a volunteer photographer. You should be, too. Bad commercial. All right. Afterlife beliefs in a cemetery. Um, by the way, that's uh, Snowy Isle Rock. I sprained my calf badly that day taking this picture at the in the cemetery. Uh, I didn't see one of the curbs and it messed me up, but I uh, I got that shot. It's not showing very well, but I thought it was nice to put in the background. The following photos are of actual headstone inscriptions or epitaphs at the cemetery behind our church, Al Rock United Methodist in Atlanta. Our question, what do these inscriptions indicate about afterlife beliefs, if anything? And we're going to start with this one. It says, no matter where you are, some part of me is with you, Ingrid. Perfect one to start with, I thought, because first of all, um, it says where. And last week we spent an, over an, a little over an hour talking about where is heaven. So the indication here is no matter where you are, some part of me is 
with you. And I love the sentiment. I'm not sure what it, that it's particularly deep theologically or that we shouldn't read anything into it that they didn't mean or that Ingrid did not mean. Um, I don't know whether Ingrid is still with us or not. I, I, I didn't check, but uh, I hope that Eugene Earl Bolton Jr. doesn't mind us talking for a minute about his epitaph in our Bible study. So there you go. Thank you, Eugene Earl Bolton Jr., sir. If he um, doesn't, he should speak up. It, it, it'll forever hold his peace. So what do you think? Oh, is this say anything about this person or Ingrid's faith? Or, or is this one of those uh, things that the funeral home suggested? Or did, is this what Ingrid wanted on there? And she wrote it. Kind of leaning toward the latter, you think? And what does it mean? Does it mean anything? I think it's a statement that her connection with him is the most important thing. Yeah, me too. I think that's what she meant. Yeah. It, I mean, if you wanted to really push it too hard, you could say whether she, he's in heaven or hell, <laughs> if you uh, are of that persuasion. Or you could say wherever, wherever, if this Bible stuff is true um, in the resurrection or if this um, spirit's leaving body, immortality of the soul is true, maybe there or maybe Hades or the underground abode of the dead in mythological pagan Greek um, history. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't think we should push it too far. I think she was just trying to say, I don't, I don't care where I'm there with you. A part of me, you know, a part of me is with you. Yeah. Um, Part of me, maybe a part of me died with you, you know, is the implication. Right. I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of sweet. All right. How about this one? It's hard to read. Um, uh, I actually had to do some enhancement of it to make it legible. But that that last line is of interest. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. Is that what it says? Who D.I.E. Mm -hmm. Who die, who die in the Lord. Blessed die. are the dead who die in the Lord. Any, any thoughts or do you recognize it? I kind of like that. Yeah, it's in it's in Revelation. I think it's Revelation 14. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. So somebody quoted scripture here and and, and it refers to um, dying in the Lord. That death is within God. Uh, specifically speaking, Christ Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, but also the source of creation itself. All the creation was uh, the Word of God made through the Word of God, who is Christ Jesus. So, um, wow. Yeah, we got a scripture quote there. This, uh, I don't know that this was suggested. And, you know, you never know how these things end up on here. Um, and sometimes they, they have errors you know headstones are not perfect either and uh, i learned that headstones can be less reliable than death records <laughs> so it's good to have those too if you're trying to get dates on somebody you know they're often wrong on headstones or names get misspelled too mm. um all right so here's another one we can safely leave our boy our darling in thy trust capital t thy we can safely leave our boy, our darling, in thy trust. And then I, I thought, well, that's really sweet. The little boy died, but he was 38, according to the dates. Which makes me wonder, you know, um, his parents must have had all the money and his wife didn't have any because they're the ones who apparently paid for the inscription. Our darling boy. Hmm. Um, safely leaving uh, him in thy trust. Now, I like that. Anybody else? I like that. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't come from the Bible. Uh, it's very personal in a way. I mean, it's, you know, our boy, our darling. Um, wow. Yeah. Kind of tender. I like it. I do too. Here's one. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Forgetting that there's no punctuation there for a moment. Uh, we know what this means. Does this ring familiar to anyone? You've heard this before, correct? Oh, yeah. You know where it comes from? Yeah. 
I don't. That's Job oh. one. I believe okay. that's Job one. I'm not sure which verse, but I think it's in the first chapter of Job. Um, and so um, death is seen as God taking the loved one away, I guess. Or in the case of Job, if you do some exegesis, he got a lot more taken away than a spouse or his family. I think everybody died, plus he lost all of his fortune, um, all of his animals, all, all of his crops, and everything went south. And uh, it all had to do, uh, in context of Job, with a trial. Um, uh, God is kind of on trial in the, co in, the, in, the, in the court of Job, you know, and his friends are weighing in as pitiful witnesses, trying to say that, you know, um, why don't you just, you know, curse God and die? Everything's gone so bad for you. Just give up. Good friends. Okay. Uh, how about this one? Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. The end of that man is peace. That's an, you know, the fact that this is on a headstone suggests that they meant for this to talk about the, uh, the death of this individual whose name is on the other side of the monument. Um, the end of that, that has quotes. Yeah, that that is definitely um, in the psalm. I think it's Psalm 37. Okay. If my memory serves. I looked some of these up. I think Psalm 37, 37. Sometimes my memory is good about things like that. Um, but don't don't hold me to it. This one's weird, you know, and, it, and it's difficult to read. But what it says is merely underneath the um, picture in the middle. It says beyond the sunset. I'm thinking that this headstone was made with a sort of generic Beyond the Sunset logo and and uh, little saying to go along with it. I, that doesn't look personal to me, but there's a person holding, a, there's a robed person, I think a man holding a child that looks like a girl, and there's a sun in the distance going down. I don't know if there's anything meant scriptural or theological here, but it certainly evokes, the sunset evokes a death, a loss, a separation. And thank you to the Vincent family for letting us share here, and the Smith family, and, Wall, and the Wallaces, and others. And what, what's, it what? That, what's it beyond the sunset, an old, old style gospel song? You know, it could have been. I don't know those old gospel songs, and one of these may be one from one. I'm not sure. I, I've got a lyric here that I'll share with you in a minute that could be from a gospel song or a poem, um, but it has a, the, some theological connotations, too. That that very well may be from... I just the found it. Of, Hank Williams, Jr. What? Hank Williams, Jr.? Yeah. You've got to be kidding. We got Hank Williams well, in the Owl Rock Cemetery. Here we go. All right, Vincent family. All right, let's look at this one. Okay, now this is the one that I think is a poem or, or, or a uh, hymn. It reads, he has crossed the Trouble River. I think they left the D off the end of Trouble. And I don't know if I can uh, share this one, too. I'm going to try at the same time. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. It says, she crossed the troubled river that lies twixt us and heaven. To her a robe of whiteness, a golden crown is given. Don't know if it's a poem or a hymn. If it's a hymn, I don't recognize it. It's an, it's an old one. Let me close that. Okay. He has crossed the troubled river. They changed the she to a he, obviously, in this case, Robert McWilliams. Now they get a little more interesting. If it will let me change the screen. Here we go. Now, this is another McWilliams. This is um, P.M. McWilliams. And this one says, how sweet to think of her in her new home. Now, what does that remind you of that we were uh, talking about when we were talking about uh, abiding and home, you know, and the tent as our earthly home and a house as Paul's metaphor for 
our post-resurrection existence bodies, that they will be our new home. Now, this may not be referring to the resurrection body. It does for me. Um, but what may be intended is the resurrection afterlife place we call heaven. How sweet to think of her in her new home, her heavenly home with, with God. I think it's what is intended. What do you think? Am I, am I on board with that? Are you on board with that? I think so. I'm over that. Now, this is one of the older ones in the cemetery, and it really doesn't have an epitaph. It just has a description on the lid of this ancient crypt. And um, it says, but it does say in the third from the bottom line, departed this life. The way that's worded suggests departed this life suggests there is an afterlife, this life compared to the life to come, whatever it is. It doesn't say what kind of afterlife, but it does imply that this life can be distinguished from the life to come. And uh, this one says the same thing. Again, uh, this one is extremely old. This person was born. Uh, in the late 1700s, immigrated to the state of Georgia in 1833 and departed this life in 1868. Right after the Civil War, huh? 65 was when the Civil War ended. The slaves were freed. And the dog has entered the room, Sheila. Yep. You have a, friend, a beautiful little, uh, is that a little border collie? It's an Aussie, yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool, Aussie. Called an Aussie? That's great. Okay. Now, check this out. Uh, thanks to the Barge family. Uh, that was one of the more prominent fa fa um, families that settled the area, uh, Europeans who first settled the area. Um, it says at the bottom there, gone. It doesn't say best. I know it looks like best, but obviously it's rest. It's gone to rest. And we've talked a lot about faith as rest. I like that. Also, rest um, uh, is a metaphor uh, for death, of, of course, that the body is buried, that it rests there. But it's also, I think, more than that, it's resting and trust in God until resurrection is the implication. Now, why do I say that? Because the barges are big on resurrection. Here's Nancy Barge. You see her dates. It says, resting till the resurrection morn. Remember, this barge says gone to rest. This one says resting till the resurrection morn. Now, that means that 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 strongly suggests belief that Nancy's body is resting here until Nancy is Nancy's body is raised on resurrection morn. Now, how do we know it's in the morning? Well, we don't. But we're talking about the dawn of hey, Patricia, we're talking about the dawn of a brand new um Say welcome to Patricia, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, Patricia. Hi. You made it. I made it safely. One piece. That's good. Welcome. Thank you. You've been listening? Yes. Well, here's these are interesting, Patricia, because they're all barges. And this one says, gone to rest. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess that could also mean gone to your eternal rest. But I think resting in trusting God and for the afterlife, but then this barge one says, resting till resurrection, the resurrection morn. Hmm. Okay, and here is her husband, Aaron Barge, resting till the resurrection morn. Okay. Are you ready for my favorite? Mm -hmm. I just love this one. Check it out. Thank you, Turner family. Okay, this says, they whom thou mournst are not dead but risen from their earthly bed. I look at like it carefully. That. Yeah, look at it carefully because it's it's wonderful. My favorite one. It's in the present tense. People are raised, but the resurrection hasn't happened yet. Remember, we're back with the barges. Resting till resurrection morn. That's that's put the till puts it in the future. Mm -hmm. This one puts it in the present. That the, that the resurrection is in this created universe. It's what we call the future, but it's real. And all of humanity is there for that day that we pose, propose is in the future. Jesus referred to resurrection in the present tense too. 
He said, uh, people are not married uh, in um, the resurrection, but are like angels, as if it's already happened. Okay? They whom thou mournest, and, and I like it that it, I like it that it honors that we who are here stuck in this slice of the space-time loaf are mourning those that we law law that we have lost in the past. Mm -hmm. But this statement transcends that grief by proclaiming the loved one raised, loved ones raised. They, it's plural, they whom thou mournest are not dead, plural and present tense, are not dead. I like it. And then, it but, but risen, risen means resurrection, risen from the their earthly bed, the earthly bed meaning the grave. Okay. So she's obviously still there because the grave's not disturbed. Now we could call the police and ask them to exhume it because we want to make sure the resurrection hadn't happened, but we know it hadn't happened. So we don't have to do that. That's the end of the slideshow. So go, Patricia. I'm sorry. It's all right. I was just, it reminded me of, um, Jesus' resurrection, when when you know the one who was on sitting near the tomb out on the rock, or the, the women said, uh, "He's not here." He is not here. He's re he's risen. He is risen. Yeah, um, he is risen. Mm -hmm. And and it says in scripture also that that uh, we share in his death and resurrection. We are baptized into his death and resurrection. It, there, that's a theme that we we are in his death and resurrection. We are in him. We abide in him. He in us. God in him, God in us, he in God, us in Christ. Um, it's a it's a familial way of talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's not inclusive language, but it's a traditional and familiar way to talk about it. All right. Um, so what do you think of the Owl Rock Cemetery inscriptions? <laughs> I think it's pretty unique. It, they are different, aren't they? They yes. are different. I, as a volunteer, I want to tell you, Shirley, I am a volunteer for Find a Grave, and I've done, I've photographed probably 10,000 graves over the course of many years. I would just go to the cemetery, take several shots of one, take several shots of another. I picked the best ones, of course, but I've taken lots of shots. And these don't seem so different from a lot of the other older cemeteries. They have similar inscriptions, but again, most of, most of them don't. These were among the 300 and something headstones that I photographed, these were the only ones that I felt like were trying to maybe say something about the afterlife in one way or another. The rest were, you know, just generic. But it's got me thinking now about what do I want on my headstone? <laughs> I want that last one. You know? <laughs> Yeah, do I want anything at all? You know, do I want to leave some? Do I want to leave my, the words, or, or you know, would you want to put something there? Or, um, oh Lord, I've seen some funny ones too, but I wish I, I didn't think about it till now. But I should have gotten some bloopers. There's some funny epitaphs out there. I think it's important to to if you if you want something, if you really want yourself represented, what you really want, and you might want to leave that in your will. I love the ones but, that take um, on fishing. I see those a lot. Mm, Got, it's mostly guys. I've never seen that. Yep, gone fishing. That's mm. their metaphor for their passing. I just went fishing. Mm. Gone fishing. I mean, who is it a comfort to? I guess those who are left behind. Um, because the person who's gone doesn't know anything about it unless they've left instruction. <laughs> so it's like, you know. Yeah, I think some people do live instructions. Um, um, you know, the uh, one guy was a real NASCAR fan. I can't remember exactly what was on there, but something about, you know, um, pedal to the metal, heading to heaven, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Gentlemen, start your engines. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally I'll find things left by family too. And those are always interesting. Sometimes for a child, it will be a, a toy of some kind, like little cars. Maybe they like their little cars and trucks and people will leave them out there. They'll take them. They, you know, I, I find them all the time. Uh, a baseball glove was sitting on a, on a headstone one time, a little, a little bitty one on a little mm -hmm. child's grave. And it, it really touched me. If somebody had been there and left this little glove there or a little glove there on top of it. And um, that was that was touching. And uh, I've seen all kinds of crazy things left out there for people, in addition to flowers. 
on my great niece's um, headstone, they have a baby doll on top of it. And it was made along with the stone. So it's all stone, but it's a baby doll. And it looks just like her favorite one. Oh, that's sweet. That's yeah. That's really cute. Um, the death of a child is so hard, and mm -hmm. and and I find especially with uh, pe people in rural areas, they just go all out to make a child's grave a special place of memorial because they know they'll come back again and again and again. Mm -hmm. As I'm sure many of the people in the cemetery over at Owl Rock have, I see people coming and going. I go talk to them when I see them come by. And uh, I always get a good story or two about who this person was or or whatever. And we have a cemetery uh, association that uh, is run by Andrew Carlton. And he, Andrew Carlton and his group do a great job of making that cemetery pretty every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're taking really good care of it. And they meet every time we have homecoming. And that place is a very worshipful uh, place for people. Um, uh, I know Ann and... David always take the flowers from the altar out to the mm -hmm. grave of their daughter. Mm -hmm. But he, well, it's it's his, his biological his biological daughter, mm -hmm. their daughter, mm -hmm. and uh, I, every Sunday it's, it's uh, that's their tradition. And mm -hmm. so, what do we? What can we? Can we infer anything from what we've just experienced about uh, afterlife in? Uh, 19th and uh, 20th century Owl Rock United Methodist Church Cemetery? I think it speaks to people's theology, what they believe about the afterlife. I mean, there were lots of scriptures. It sounds like there were some songs or some hymns of some kind. And then there were some just precious words, seems mm -hmm. like, from loved ones. So the variety, the, but the majority seemed to be something from scripture or something depicting one's theology of what they believe about the afterlife yeah that they they will see them again or you know rest in or, peace or a little bit of you is with me or a little mm -hmm. bit of me is in with, has left with you or mm -hmm. um um uh, love but not forgotten for, yeah you know missed but not forgotten or something like that um, gone but not well, gone but not forgotten that's a, that's the one i see a lot um, so what's, what was missing for me was I kept thinking I was going to see something about, um, he, you know, he's not here. His spirit has gone to be with God or his soul is with Jesus or something like that. I, I didn't see that kind of afterlife, the, what we would call today, theologically, the immortality of the soul. Or the belief, the, the, the we think it's a modern belief. It's not. It, it's ancient Greek. Uh, the belief that your your pure soul leaves your filthy body mm -hmm. at death, and and uh, that's that's paganism. It, but I didn't see it there. But it is the most prominent belief among Christians today that souls leave bodies. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see it on. I didn't see it on any of the inscriptions. Per se, I, where was the word? I didn't see the word soul or spirit. You know. So that's interesting because we just had a, um, an incident at the hospital where one of my chaplains, um, one of the patients, called her and said, "I need to see the chaplain." So she went and she said, "I need you to look at, take a picture. I need you to see this." I took a picture of it, and it seems as if there was a spirit-like something looking to try to get back into the body, into the in the mog. They have cameras set up, mm -hmm. and because it, they would, they couldn't get back in, and they finally left. Now, <laughs> I'll okay. show it to you. I have it on it's, my a, it's a YouTube video it's where a, where someone's ghost or spirit is trying to get back in their body in the morgue. Yes. Oh. And and, and they're going back and forth and trying to find a way in. Well, that's what it appears to uh, to be. And then they couldn't, so they they see them even leaving the parking lot. This ball of Light, like light. I mean, I have it on my phone. I'll show it to you. <laughs> we well, then it must be true. Thought about so, so <laughs> no. My thing is, my 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 um whole thing around it is this patient truly believes that was a spirit the of patient. the deceased. Yes. Um, le trying to get back and yes. just leaving, and that's where she was. She was convinced. Now the chaplain didn't. That's not her theology. She went with her though, didn't she? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Well, see, that's so, that's the um, thing is that if she believes that her mm -hmm. needs are more important her spiritual needs are more important than correcting mm -hmm. her scripture or theology mm -hmm. yeah so that was good yeah. that's what that's what a good chaplain does mm -hmm. yeah yeah 
That's interesting. Um, uh, anybody suspicious that that uh, could have been easily done with power with um, what do you call it? Those editors. Photoshop. Yeah, oh, yeah. they call Photoshop. them. Um, Photoshop. Orbs. They call them what? Orbs. Orbs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Orbs. I don't know if orbs are. It's what this was. Orbs are. Um, they're actually pe little pieces of dust that are too close to the camera for it to focus right. on. So it makes a little circle. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a lens effect, but everybody thinks they're they're spirits and says so on on uh, TV shows um, on the History Channel, which mm -hmm. now is mu not much interested in anything but ghosts, UFOs, and Bigfoot. It's right here. It's so this is it. Oops. Oh, Can you could you see it? No, I didn't see anything. It was ten seconds long. Yeah, it's supposed with the moving. It's all in the hysterical channel. I mean, that's so far. There that is. yeah, that that is an orb. All that is is dust or a bug. It was too close to the lens. Dust in the it went across. So when a when a when a when a camera can't focus on a piece of dust or something flying in front of it, you get a blur. It's sort of like when you're um, looking at stars with a camera. Um, you have to be careful with the focus because when it's out of focus, it becomes an orb. Well, so it is, so it is an un, it is an unidentified flying object. It's, 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 it's <laughs> It is. It's a UFO. That's it. I've seen them. Oh my God. I've seen it. That's a stretch. I have to tell you though. Oh, it's actually it's true. Yeah, I know it's true. It's an yeah. object. It was flying and it's unidentified. Uh -huh. That's what it my is. dad's mother. But she I, believed it's, it's, in the soul and all that. Bobby. And we took a picture one night of my daughter getting ready for the prom. And when I showed her the picture later, she said, be careful. She says, there's people watching her. I said, what? And she said, see all them little dots around her? Them are people watching her. Uh, <laughs> wow. You well, know, I already knew, you know, I mean, it was kind of like at night. So you got bugs flying around and everything, you know, so, but. Yeah, I mean, but people, I mean, that's what she believed. Yeah, I mean, and maybe that's comforting to her. People, if it's comforting to her, what's wrong with that? Um, right. but is if we're if we're doing something in the way of a Bible study, it's always important to give room for people to have disagreement, but it's also important to do research and to show evidence for what you're claiming. And um, so I was looking for evidence of afterlife. And I, I grabbed every one I could find. I looked at every single headstone in that cemetery. And I didn't, and I just thought it was interesting. I didn't see anything about uh, the immortal soul theolo theology per se. I saw several of that implied or directly explicitly said risen or resurrection. I was kind of, I was pleased. I was pleased that there is some historical precedent in Sandtown in the 19th and 20th centuries for their understanding that resurrection uh, is, a, is the Christian life afterlife. I mean, my struggle is still, um, we talked about the physical body leaving, but I, I, I still, I'm still caught with spirits, my spirit leaving and going with Jesus and being resurrected, well, not, not my body. Yeah, so I'm still struggling with that. Yeah, I think I think that's good. I I I know it's crazy. Um, I, I'm just it's one of those things where Gene helped me out here. I mean, we have to report the facts, even if it doesn't line up with what most of us were taught, right? I mean, the facts are that Christian afterlife in the New Testament is resurrection, and Paul put all his marbles in that basket, and Jesus was raised from the dead. His spirit didn't leave his body; he was raised from the dead. He had a body. He ate. They could touch him. He well, said, I am not a spirit, or you could also translate it ghost. I, have, I, have, I have scars. I have scars. See my hands. 
But wasn't Timothy. he made up of spirit, soul, and body? Wasn't he all he's of it? Whole person? All of it in one. But so that means, so yes, even though the physical, yes, he's physical. He has a spiritual so body. So it went with this physical all in one. Yeah, all in one. All was raised, all died at once. All, all raised, raised at once. once. That's right. what it says. Now that that flies in the face of what most Christians believe, I think. Am I wrong? What about it, Gene? I mean, what's what's your take on this? I think there's just amazing amount of stuff that we've been influenced in in either our raising or our society that have no basis in terms of our scripture, the reading of scripture. Um, and and it and under that circumstance, it's understandable that a lot of people believe that. I'm reading a novel right now that's that's really interesting, uh, and and the one of the characters is Dante's Inferno, if you will, the writing itself. And now mm -hmm. it makes me want to go back and reread. How much do folks believe about hell and torture and all that comes from Milton and Dante? Milton and Dante, and Paradise and Lost, and Dante's Inferno. Yeah, and but you go back and you read the Bible, and it's not there. Nope, it's not. I'd lead, I'd like to read that and uh, C.S. Lewis's Screw Tape Letters. Mm. Screw Tape Letters, I highly recommend. It's the it's the I easiest. Highly recommend. It's the easiest and funniest book he ever wrote. It's an entire fiction okay. about the devil trying to chain uh, to train an apprentice apprentice demon on how to be, you know, a full fledged. It's like a school for demons. <laughs> and he's trying to teach him, and I, I don't remember all the details, but see, I think I can remember one. Oh, so good. The biggest, the big, the biggest way to trip up a Christian is when they do something altruistic and generous, is to point that out to them, and then they become prideful of the fact that they did it, and it kills um, their generosity and turns it into to selling them and promoting themselves. You've done it. Mm -hmm. You've already received your reward, Jesus said. Yeah, you've already received your reward. Yeah. Right hand, meet the left hand. Yeah. Congratulations. You have received your reward. <laughs> you, have no you, have been, you have been noticed. Thank you. Congratulations. You got seen. You got your 15 minutes. Paula has joined us. Hey, Paula. Yellow Paula. I see all the laughter. I, I, I missed what she was laughing she, at. I don't know. She's probably laughing at the same stuff we are. Uh -huh. Not, uh, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would have really bolstered uh for me the fact that this uh spirits leaving body thing um was dominating the theology of that day. And it very well may be that it did. This is a very small sample size. It's mm -hmm. just a it's just the few applicable inscriptions from one cemetery with only 300 graves in it, you know. Uh, it's still dominating, but but it, it it you can't tell that from the inscriptions. There's no indication that spirits leaving bodies was a prominent theology from reading the inscriptions I just showed you. In fact, resurrection dominates if anything does. So and I'll, can, you, I'll, or can you go back and put the theology seal, seal of approval on those tombstones? <laughs> don't know. I give I am I give like the Turner one, the last one. It, it has that's been shot. It has my seal of approval. The, the last one, Turner. Thank you, Turner family. I love that one. The barges is good too. I like the scripture quotes. Uh, I didn't I didn't see any that I disliked or was worried about really. No relation to Ted Turner, right? I would I wouldn't know. Um there might be money involved. It was. It's a pretty uh, it could be. It it it's a pretty common name. I, I really don't. I, it's possible. Um, I see famous names a lot. I don't know if they're related. And when I see, of course, a family name, like a, someone who, who has a name that's connected to my family, um, not just Gary or some of the other names like Seegers or, or Seagraves or Thornton or, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, or Herndon or something like that. But, you know, like um, other names in our family, you know, from way back. Mm -hmm. Ben Chris here. You have Thorntons in your family? I do. Lots. My mother's mother's maiden name was Thornton. No. My, my grandmother's mother's name, uh, married name was Thornton. Hey, cousin. 
<laughs> do, you, do you have any? Do you have any that live in Hart County? Possibly. Yeah, isn't that in Italy? <laughs> Italy. 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 I'm sorry, Italy. 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 Yeah. I used to live in Hartwell, and uh, and Hart I, County, I, Italy. And I I talked to some Thorntons there that were definitely our my mom's family. Yeah, and I've got them online too. Yeah, that's uh, that's one that's that's a strong line in our family. They had bunches of kids back then in those days, you know. Yeah. So, um, Bert, I got to tell you about four years ago when Mom was still independently living. One of my trips down to check on her, she said we've got to go do some arrangements. I didn't know what that meant, so we went to the funeral home. She'd already prepaid for her funeral. Because it was very important, she decided that she no longer wanted a purple and silver casket. It needed to be purple and gold. Mm. And she <laughs> wanted to get her footstone arranged. And so nobody, you know, all the businesses that she was used to dealing with had gone under during the hurricane. So we find somebody that can do it. What do you want on it? She wants her whole name, June, Rose, Quay, Martino, Nugent and her birthday none of the other stuff none of the none of the quotes a few things and they said now okay now we'll put the cash and all your family will have to do is contact us at your death and for an additional charge, you pay for everything now except for the last engraving that'll be 150 dollars and i said well you know mom we could save 150 if you could go ahead and give us a date now uh, and we could get it all taken care of and be done with this, and I wouldn't have to worry about it ever again. Oh my lord! I hope she. I hope you ducked. I was. I was. Out, I was out of arm's reach, so it was. Okay. Yeah, when she swung that person, not she, amused. You were not in range. I knew when I fired the first shot that I was out of range. Out of range. <laughs> Smart. But mm. what's everybody going to have on your tombstones? That's a good question. If I I'm, have one. I'm not going to die. I'm just going to be resurrected. Going to be caught up. Together in the clouds and be forever the with the Lord. The trumpet <laughs> shall sound. Yes. Then the dead in Christ shall be raised. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up. We need, Hallelujah. We need the organ playing in the background for this sermon. Bert, Bert, Bert's tombstone will say, I told you so. <laughs> Becky said that. I told you I was sick. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you want to put on yours? I told you I was sick. <laughs> I got better. I'm not putting that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mike is going to have to put that. I'm not putting that. <laughs> What's on yours, Mike? Oh, Lord. Oh, goodness. I, I've just been thinking about you know, when when we're looking at, there's kind of a conflict in whether it's the spirit that rises or the body. I mean, to me, it, it simplifies it more when I think about, uh, you know, that the name for God is I am. Yes. And it's like, we all have a sense of who, of I am whatever that is I, that has our life perspective in it and everything. And, uh, and I think, you know, that is, that is to me kind of a, a being present, you know, throughout your life, just whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you perceive, you, you know, you respond, you, you share, you connect through that and uh and like there's something about that the i amness that has to that continues apparently from here to the next step whatever that is if it's another dimension uh just call it heaven whatever um, well, this, uh, this is a huge theological statement because if God is, it's God's name and if God's nature are I am. Yeah. That means that I am stands over against I am not. And right. death is certainly an I am not that we cannot defeat, that we cannot stop. 
Um, and uh, so resurrection was the resurrection of Jesus and the final resurrection, which are of a piece. Yeah. Um, are God's inevitable because he is being his his statement against non-being. There will be no non-being that will not stand. And the, the resurrection is God's no to our non-existence. Right. Is that, is that theologically uh, clear enough? Yeah, I like I that. I to say it simply, um, but it, it, is a, it is a rather rich theological mind. And I just... I, I just want, as you think about God as I am, as existence, what that what that means to me is, is that God is the ground of all being, um, the mind from which all existence comes, and that we are included in that, and therefore we are included in God's um, I am, uh, that, yeah. we, that we have been included in that, in resurrection. Yeah. This will not stand. It's God's, it's God's statement in Jesus' resurrection against death. I love that. And, uh, and, uh, and I still think often of Jesus saying on the cross, Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. They know not what they do. Which and, wasn't and, just a nice thing to say, but was kind of the point. Yeah. And, and he's not just talking about those who believed in him while he was there. No, no, he forgave the human race. It's very clear in the Bible that uh, he, he forgave the people that were active, actively killing him in the yeah. moment. Yeah, for he sure. Torturing. Mm -hmm. For sure. He understood it. He, so the two, he, the two, the two, the bookends of God's nose are notice sin, keeping us in relationship with God. No no more no more brokenness, no more confusion, no more darkness. Um that that uh we are forgiven that there God is grace and mercy. And we receive uh that mercy in a full overflowing measure. Uh so the no to death is the cross, the no to excuse me, the no to sin is the cross, the no to death is the empty tomb. These are God's nose to the two things which we can't fix for ourselves right. and, that, and that have plagued humanity. Our broken sinfulness, um, in, our inclination towards sin, and, uh, uh, and dying. Of course, it, it fixes other things, too, uh, you know, like illness. I mean, and, you know, because our bodies will be impervious to things like that. Um, it means that we won't be quarreling anymore. There won't be war and that kind of thing. But primarily, the no's are the, to the fundamental ills of the human uh, experience um, existentially, and that is sin and death. Sounds good. Yeah, what you thinking? You out there? Well, yeah, are you standing by? Yeah. She turned I was. Up. I was going to let Sheila go ahead. Okay. No, no, honey. Go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, go ahead, Sheila. Sheila, she is, Sheila's going to wait on you. It's okay. <laughs> She's already spoken. It's all right. Go ahead. I guess she's going to wait on me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, go on, Sheila. Okay. Well. Did you forget what you were going to say? Yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Been there, done that. Well, fill, fill us in. While you're thinking of that, go ahead, if you don't mind, Kia. Okay. I don't really. I, I just, I thought it was interesting about the um, the inscriptions. But I also, I don't agree with tombstones and things like that because you have family members that then go and worship words and dates 
on a piece of concrete that don't really reflect the person. It reflects what you saw in that person, mm. not necessarily the individual themselves. So I that I, I've listened and that's kind of where my stance is right now, so, just to kind I mean, of listen. Yeah, okay. And I don't want to probe, but I mean I'm I, I mean I know I know you may be implying something that I heard someone else say once sometime about thinking of tombstones as being silly and morose. Is that too going too not, far? Not necessarily silly. I just, I, I, for me, and this is on a personal note, I don't believe in putting my family through going and sitting to a piece of, or a slab of concrete with some words on it to talk to it. And it's an it at that point. It's not me. It's an it. And yeah. that, I mean, like I said, this is more of a personal feel for just me, myself. Um, and that's, I think it's great for others if that's what they choose to do. I'm not knocking that. I'm not, you know, um, displaying anything negative towards that. But just for me, I I don't want to put my family through that of just sitting in in the cold or in the heat like right now it's 90 plus who wants to go out there and clean off flat first of all if you didn't give me flowers where i could smell them and see them on you know right now then don't give a piece of of concrete <laughs> and ground flowers if i never got it that's that's yeah. me yeah you'd rather them remember you than to sit there and stare at a rock Absolutely. Okay, I hear that. I, 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 I totally hear that. Absolutely. You know? I just yeah, think it's, it's some, which it's is one of the messy. reasons why I really, I mean, I I am not sold for myself on whether or not what I want. But I mean, I I don't know if I have any choice. I mean, unless I put it in my will, I guess people will do whatever they want to do, or maybe they'll ask me before I die what I want to do, and I'll say I don't know. And then you know, they, but I'd hate. I, on the other hand, you don't want to leave the burden of deciding on your children, and then they fight over it or something. Yeah. Well, in the state of Georgia, believe it or not, because I've done this, you cannot pay up front. They won't allow it. You can't pay. You can put money aside in a separate account allocated for it, but they won't act it. Some, and depending on the, the, the establishment you go to, they won't take the money up front, but um, you can put it in a will. That oh, way okay. your wishes can be honored. That's cool. That's probably what I'll do. Some in the Bahamas, different um, states. Gene was asking um, if Kia bought a policy, or can you buy a policy? Yeah, yeah, for your to, for your funeral arrangements, and yeah, I've seen those advertised. Yeah, you can, you can for unless you want it to go to a specific place. Then at that point, some of them don't have policies, and they ask you to do an account. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do a separate account with your banking institution or with your financial institution, and you can set aside those monies specifically for that allocated. And that way it goes where you need for it to go. You already have the cost. Nobody has to make up anything for you. It's already done. Yeah, but I never thought about what I would want on a, on a tombstone per se. But I know for me, when um, I had a lot of unfinished business with my dad and when he died um, and just lately, last couple of years, few years, when I went home one time on a trip, I went to the cemetery and sat next to his grave and spoke to him. And that was the, the, the best comfort for me. I mean, I was crying and telling them how I felt from my heart, all my anger that I was holding on to. Um, and the stuff in it was very helpful for me. And I encourage other people to do that, you know, write a letter to the, the deceased loved ones if they don't have an opportunity to say what they need to say, needed to say while they were alive. And it could be a really good source of comfort, but I've never thought about the tone stone itself. Yeah. So I'm thinking about that as which, we talk about this today. Which is an old but, custom. I mean, in, in the U.S., I think it's done less now. And I think people are getting tombstones less now. And the ones, and when they do get them, they tend to offer, you know, opt for a, a, like a plaque that's just on the ground instead of one of these big monuments. You don't see these monuments much anymore. You see more traditional headstones and you see the little ones on the ground that are like memorial plaques that are flush with the grass. Yeah. So you have to weed it around it or it'll, the grass will cover it up, you know? Right. Um, we have a lot of those at Owl Rock mm -hmm. and, and, and they're the newer ones. People back in the older days didn't do that so much. They had those monsters. 
You know, we got some yeah. monsters back there. Yeah. Um, and you know, you know, you don't want to turn it into who had the most mo money is demonstrated by who had the tallest monument in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. But there's always the risk of it becoming, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit. I don't know, ostentatious, yeah. you know, um, yeah. but at the same time, if a family wants to do something when their dad or mom dies or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever they want to do is fine with me. I don't care how people interpret it. If they don't want anything, if they want to cremate, that's fine with me. If they don't want to service in, in a worship center, but out in a park, that's mm -hmm. fine with me. I don't care what they want to do. If they want me to officiate, just tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. Yeah, I think it's the family's needs that come first. And mm -hmm. if a, and, you know, I've got a I've got a family member who goes regularly to uh, the grave of a loved one. OK, mm -hmm. and I mean, regularly and and just has a moment and others, you know, they they have a funeral, they bury the person and, you know, they go back every 10 years or something, you know, yeah. because it, they know that. It is what it is. And then think about David and Anne, they go every week. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like here, um, I think some people, they don't care too much about tombstones or what's written. No, I don't think so anymore. Yeah, some people just have, but, but we're all in different places. And I think it's fine, whatever you want and wherever you are and, and however you interpret um tombstones and and flowers and well, and stuff like that i think i think some people are like um also they they are remembering um loved ones with little shrines at the house maybe in the room where the person especially if it was a child maybe the child's yeah. room or maybe maybe there's a place in the living room or the hall or mm -hmm. or you know the entrance hallway or something where there's a table and mm -hmm. candles and a picture and mm -hmm. or whatever and um you know, but the question I, I, I guess was really specific tonight, and that is, you know, were there inscriptions that reflect afterlife beliefs from yeah. long ago yeah. on those tombstones in that cemetery? But what I guess we're noticing is, is all kinds of things around the way things have changed and the way people deal with grief and funerals and burial now. It's quite different than it was 50 years ago or 100 years ago or for real 150 or 200 years ago, as some of those indicate. I'm, now I'm thinking about what's on my dad's and what's on my sister's. I don't remember anything other than the names written there, but I don't remember. I need to go on. Um, Your sister's is beautiful. It's a work of art, man. I'm telling you, it's gorgeous. Yeah, but I'm trying to remember if there was a, a scripture I, I, or something I, I, on I it. I can't like, remember yeah, either. I don't remember that. Yeah. I need to go look I think up. there is a scripture on it. Oh, by the way, um, for the record, uh, John 17, 3 will do nicely. Um and this is eternal life, knowing the Son and the Father who sent him. Is that what you want? Yeah. That, I mean, if I had to vote today, that's what I'd want. Not for me, but, you know, as a teacher of the scriptures, that 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 verse right there undoes a lot of bad theology. Eternal life is knowing the Son and the Father. I mean, knowing, knowing Jesus, knowing God is eternal life. It's that relationship. It's that growing knowledge and relationship, you know, mm -hmm. that evolving living relationship that does not die between us and god yeah. and uh so you can put that on mine anybody else want got a verse or a saying or something that they would put on theirs you want an epitaph hi was just sitting here thinking about all that mm -hmm. and of course me being who i am i would probably want hello god this is sheila are you ready for me <laughs> ready, or not. ready or not ready or not yeah ready or but, not. But seriously i i i agree with um now when my daddy passed away it was it, and, and you look at it as a new thing this is a new thing that's happened so mm -hmm. yes i wanted to still be with my daddy so I would go all the time, all the time. And I would just sit there and I would talk and, you know, about the day or whatever. Was this years ago, Sheila, at this point, or when was this? That this you was back frequently? in uh, 1996. Oh, okay. Thank you. And um, where did you find that? We, uh, 
I don't know. I, I still have a rough time with, with the fact that daddy's gone, but I rejoice more because I know where he's going. You know, I know that I will see him one day. This, this is what I believe. I will see him one day. And on his uh, headstone, he does say uh, that uh, him and Sadie, which was a dog like Coco, um, will be herding cows alongside God. <laughs> because that's what we did, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I, which I think it's kind of a nice little saying, whether he will be or not, but that's what he believed. And that's what was put on there. Um, I think everybody has their own belief of what they're going to be doing when, when we are with God. We don't know. Well, Sheila, what, what, if, what if you and your dad are raised together? And your relationship is completely reconciled in the resurrection, and every all the hurts and uh, wounds of living and growing up as a child and trying to be a good parent, which none of us can be perfect at, and um, and and all of the uh, the wounds from things said and done or not said and not done um, are erased, and you completely accept, forgive, and understand one another. And that that's happening right now in the resurrection. Again, I don't know. I'm not there yet. Neither is I'm, you. I'm not there yet either. But I, but I, in, in one sense. But what I'm suggesting is, in another sense, you are. If the scriptures are right, that the ra the the dead are raised. Jesus said it in the present tense. It's just that, and he refused to speak of it in the past tense. He never did. It's all, uh, I mean, in the future tense, he always used the present tense to refer to the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because he knew it was real. You know, it's just a part of the universe we can't see yet physically because of our limitations right now, um, our human limitations in this time frame. Um, to us, it just seems like it hadn't happened and we're just grieving the loss. Um, but what if we're already with our loved ones and the resurrection uh, right now I'm looking in a future to, that we to, can't see. To um, get, knowing my brother who died just before me, he was four months. I never knew Sammy, and I am looking forward to getting to know him. You, know? you probably in the resurrection know him very, very, very well. I hope I do. And I, he knows you very, very, very and well. And I see him, he's like, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you did last summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> we saw a fairly water snake. Four water moccasins last summer, and what else did we see? Yeah, I know. But been... Old, terrified, beginning herpers. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we've run uh, past the, the time. Um, I hope this was uh, a little lighter for you. Um, I'm, I'm not 100%, but I, I, thanks for carrying the ball. Y'all were great tonight. I appreciate it very much. And it was, uh, it was easier for me to repair it that way, you know, than it was for me. Uh, it's hard for me to think, you know, if I'm not feeling well. So just grabbing those photos and coming in here and letting y'all wrestle with it with me was good. And I think, Mike, Mike, you gave us the depth theology uh, tonight. You, you brought us into that I am, that existence. I thought I thought that really enlarged the picture. And um, that was very yeah. helpful. And, um, I, I like that it's like, we have an I amness here, and and then whatever the I amness that's going to be next. Yeah, and our, our I amness, our amness now is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. and yes, and is, limited, as you said, and, limited. And, and we don't have roots in the ground of our being, but the resurrection gives us those roots and unifies us, unites us with Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one with Christ utterly. And with the another. heart and the mind of Christ and the heart and the mind of ourselves and the heart and the mind of everyone else, how relationships will be different is hard to imagine because there will be no conflict and there will be no ulterior motives and, and there will be no lying. Mm, right. We'll be known, fully known, we'll be fully known even as we know Christ, we will be fully known by Christ and others. I shall know him. I shall, I shall know him. Know him. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, buddy. 
You going swimming? Hey, um, make sure you say hi to Patricia for it. He's sitting right there. She's hey, hanging. Hey, Mr. Bob. Hi, <laughs> hey, Patricia. Hi. How are you? Good God to bless see you. you. God bless you. God bless you too, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Bob, I wish I wish I had I wish I was unashamed <laughs> like you. <laughs> you are liberated, sir. Okay. Y'all, I hope y'all have a great night. Anything else? Paula, I got your text. I will be calling you in a few minutes. Thank you, Paula. Appreciate you being here. Mm -hmm. Um, thanks everybody. Anything else? That's good. Y Love y'all. Love y'all. Yeah. Pray for me. I'm praying for you. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Pia. Uh, hey, 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 I will. Bye-bye, y'all. Take care. Take it Bye. easy. Bye. All right.